Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to Bee and KB's. Today is uh, Friday the 26th or 27th or something like that of March. And uh, I am back out at the yard on a hill for the time being, just very quickly to drop off another bucket into the communal feeder uh, because the sun is coming out and it's supposed to be like 55, 56 degrees. And all of the other yards uh, that I had communal feed on the other day emptied it. They emptied it really quickly when the sun came out. So I wanted to make sure that I had some more out here uh, in the plan or in the expectation that they had emptied theirs and they had. Hello lady. Um, so yeah, I came out here, dropped a bucket in that, and now I have two other yards that I have to do basically what I was doing the other day, uh, which is lifting the backs of hives and checking to see the weight and feeding the uh, extremely light ones. So. I am off to another bee yard. Alright, so now here we are at a yard that you guys haven't seen yet this year, and you haven't seen it yet this year that, because I haven't seen it yet this year. This is my yard in somebody's backyard. Uh, right up against the White River there, and I love and hate this yard. It does wonderfully. Um, we put up a lot of honey here. The bees just build up like crazy. There's a lot of natural forage available. Um, I hate it because I've got to walk down here, and we set this yard up like four years ago, three years ago or something like that, <sighs> with uh, splits. Very light, easy to move splits that we set down here thinking, I don't know, this is a great looking spot, but it's in a river valley and I can't ever get a truck down here. So we don't use this really for honey production, although they do put up a lot of honey. Uh, we tend to use this for brood production uh, because brood's a lot lighter. Ooh, I see some pollen coming in. Ooh, I just did anyway. Let's see. We watch for a second. Okay, I saw some for a bit. That was the first little spot of pollen that I've seen this year. I know a lot of uh, the people south of me have been reporting pollen coming in in Michigan for a long time. Um, hours waited until after the last little bit of a uh, freeze. And so, like I said, I just saw some, so that's good. But uh, I am going to run through this yard really quickly. Lifting up tops just to see how many are alive, uh, checking to see how heavy they are, the same kind of thing I was doing the other uh, day at those other yards. And um, hopefully they're all, you know, not super heavy so that I don't have to remove syrup frames, but hopefully they're all uh, heavy enough for me to not have to worry about them. Uh, but I'll be setting out more communal feed regardless of all that. So let's get to it. didn't go as well as I had hoped. Uh, three singles died and one double. So that's like four out of a yard of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Four out of eighteen, but the worrying aspect is that they were three singles. Now of course, uh, Singles have less, you know, room for error, and uh, I wasn't out here for the majority of the latter part of the fall, so my guess is they probably got robbed out. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't show back up here at all after the start of October because I got everything up to wait and uh, moved on to the other yards, the other ones that needed more attention. And uh, so I'm assuming that the larger ones robbed out the smaller ones, which is kind of going to further uh, pieces of evidence uh, toward my, you know, uniform strength hive plan for 2020. 
uh, and that would be, you know, singles only. Um, but either way, though, so three, four dead out of 18 here. Uh, so that's one of the one of the worst yards, probably the worst uh, yard. So not necessarily what I had hoped uh, to see, but we've got a lot of buzzing bees, and so I'm happy to see that, and I'm happy to see the pollen coming in. Um, and the uh, colonies that are alive don't need any help from me right now. They don't need any internal feeding, so I won't really be, you know, popping any tops or yanking off any inner covers. Uh, because, like I said, everything looks good. There's pollen coming in, and I'll drop out a communal bucket. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start lugging some of this dead out stuff up to the truck, and then uh, I will be headed off to another yard. All right, uh, this will probably be one of the last times I visit this yard without moving bees out. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to move these bees out of here. As you see with these junky uh, pools, these the landowners here have had an issue since uh, August of last year uh, because there's a problem with a pet's water dish. Uh, and it's a pain in my butt, so um, we're just going to move them out and move them to one of those new yards I've been talking about. We went out yesterday and interviewed or, you know, checked out uh, five different pieces of property from five different landowners trying to find new pieces uh, or new yards to set up. And uh, we found, what, four, I think, four really good ones. So we've got more than enough spaces to move these bees, these bees and all of our splits and all that. Uh, so we've got the, the space to expand into, so to, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so this is an active yard uh, with a bunch of really good looking colonies that will need to be moved within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but for right now, I'm doing the same thing I have been doing, and that is lifting up the backs of these hives to make sure that they aren't in desperate, desperate need of food. Uh, as you can see, they are getting some food. But in yards of kind of mixed hive strength, it's never really the ones that need it, uh, that, get the, that, that get the food from the communal source. So uh, I will be checking to see if any of them need spot feeding. Um, yeah, and I think that's just pretty much it. More bee stuff in March. I had pulled one dead out away from here last time I was out here and then I just pulled three more which means four down in this yard 24 up so four dead out of 28 so what is that like something around like 15% loss um, you know we have a couple yards I guess probably this is slightly under average because we have one yard that was 39 of 40 and we've got another yard that was 38 of 42 uh, and then this one 24 of 28 and then I've got the one that uh, that was sort of crappy which was four out of uh, what 18 that I lost um, so yeah I don't know somewhere around 85 90 percent something like that and I'm happy with that I'm, I'm extremely happy with that you know we don't uh, wrap our hives, we don't uh, move them in, indoors into climate controlled rooms, we just let them out here and, and make sure that they're happy, heavy, and healthy, and, uh, and hope that what we've done in the summer and fall was enough to see bees flying around in the spring, 
and we did it and I'm happy and that is uh, you know that's the goal that's what we walk away from these yards in October hoping to see when we get back in what's usually early April but in this year uh, is mid to late March so I am happy uh, none of these hives need any food they are all uh, good in that regard and I need to, like I said, split these, so I probably really even shouldn't even uh, be putting out another bucket. I think I'm going to because I have five buckets, um, and I really want to, you know, help the uh, the production here because I'd really like to be splitting all of these uh, by mid-May. That is my plan. I am going to, like I said, give another bucket here in this communal, and then I'm going to stop off at a couple other yards to distribute these buckets that I made earlier today. Uh, because sugar isn't cheap, especially now that I can't get it from Walmart. Um, so I'm not going to have it go to waste sitting in the back of my truck. Hear those frogs? It's cool. It's spring. So I am back to what we call our Fremont yard. Because it's in the city of Fremont. And it's our only yard in the city of Fremont. Um, but yeah, like I said, I am just... Dropping off some food in the communal bucket and listening to these frogs for a second. No digging into hives because I just fed the light ones two days ago. You think these bees have been out pooping on stuff or what? I think they're enjoying the spring just as much as I am. And I hope you guys are. All right. That's a loud bee when they get close to your ear. Um, okay, so I think I have two more buckets. So two more yards. Here's what the back of the truck looks like. In case you're curious about that. So I'm back to a yard that I've been to uh, a couple times already this year on this channel, and you'll probably recognize it. Uh, but I wanted to walk past these hives because look at all of that activity. It's March, people. Beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, this makes me happy. It's a beautiful sound. In other yards, the frogs are chirping. But in this yard, all you hear are bees buzzing. This is a neat piece of property. You got a swampland back there. <clears throat> and there's our open feeder. The reason that I'm out here right now is to drop a bucket in that. But first, we'll walk past the rest of these hives and listen to some more bee buzzing. Makes me happy. It makes me happy. So, all right, um, other than dropping a bucket in another feeder at the house, uh, and then, you know, this feeder as well, um, I'm done with bee stuff for today, so I'm going to go back and edit this video and get that on YouTube, but uh, thanks for watching, I hope you guys are out doing bee stuff, and I hope it's sunny and, and just a wonderful spring day for you guys like it is for me. Uh, let me know what you guys are doing in your bee yards and how your bees are doing. Thanks for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.